and here we go. Hi everyone, this is the six uh, times that we gather uh, to celebrate uh, what's happening in this committee in the Open COVID-19 initiative. Uh, it's been now a bit more than a month that we started working all together. Uh, originally, it, it started around uh, the diagnosis uh, test project and it branched out in so many interesting ideas and the community is now larger than uh, 3,000 uh, members on the Drogo platform. It's been really a really impressive uh, collaborative uh, effort uh, and uh, with, uh, it's, been, it's been really, really amazing looking at everything you've been doing so far. It's, uh, so thank you for all that. And we'll be going uh, through all the updates that you want to share. So the, the various projects within the initiative will be also sharing what they've been working on. If you have not yet uh, put your name in the agenda, you can do it now uh, and we'll be calling for you. Uh, so first of all, uh, the one big news for uh, this week uh, is that we have done, we have finished our first round of application for the reviewing uh, process and the uh, application for grants. So that's, that's, what, that's a big step for, for this community. And so we received uh, 12 projects, 12 very promising projects. Uh, and uh, we are currently uh, in the process of reviewing them. Uh, you have more information in the agenda as we want also you, uh, you know, member of this community to take part in this review process also. So you would be uh, able to access uh, the content of each applications as uh, they've been filling their own uh, about section in their Drogold project page. Uh, so everything is, uh, is open here. You can have a look, you can post uh, comments if you want on project pages too. Um, and then the goal is to finish the reviewing process by the end of this week so that we can provide um, the resources to the project that needs them uh, very fast. Um, also, this is uh, for the project that uh, either couldn't make it uh, because uh, they didn't hear about the information, everything happened very fast, uh, or they, they actually want still to participate and were not ready. Um, there will be a second round coming extremely soon. Uh, we're thinking uh, next week uh, anyway, as we need to act fast. So uh, I don't want to provide an exact date, but what you can do is already have a look to the project application template uh, to understand what you need to fill uh, for your application and you can start working on that. Uh, so that's pretty much it in terms of um, like more global news and uh, you'll, you'll be hearing more about, uh, about all this uh, very soon this week. I want to give the, the, the microphone to, uh, to Leo Blondel, uh, Jogo's co-founder and CTO to give us uh, some updates about, uh, about what happened on the platform. Uh, so Leo, are you here? Yep, I'm here. Um, all right, uh, so this week is an invisible week for uh, anyone else than the developers. Uh, so there's no new particular feature that we could release because we're working really hard in the background to refactor a lot of things, um, uh, uh, a lot of things for the, uh, the, the different, uh, sorry, I'm gonna start again. Yeah, so this week we worked uh, really hard in order to refactor the code for the front end and the back end and many different locations that needed to uh, be changed for us to be able to expand feature-wise much more rapidly in the future. So uh, on the front end part, we have two developers working really hard on getting Next.js to work, uh, which uh, is a new framework basically, but it's gonna help all of you to be able to share all of your objects in a much better manner. So very soon you'll be able to share your project on any social media and you will have those like nice little cards, for example, right? That like tell you what your project is about and things like this. So this is an exciting feature that's gonna come up. Uh, we're also working really hard with a team of designer to get the UX uh, much better. And so they've been interviewing maybe some of you um, in order to know more uh, about your experience with Jogo. Uh, and finally, uh, we're basically starting to move our stack towards Kubernetes as well, which is a lot of work. So all of this work is invisible 
at the moment, but it will soon come to fruition and you'll all be able to enjoy a much more pleasant experience on uh, our services. <laughs> 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 I'll let, uh, I'll let uh, Thomas. Uh, oh, yeah, and uh, one thing, do uh, I wanted to thank uh, Luis Aria and uh, Chorus Royce that would have helped us uh, uh, push a lot of different code and help us with the development as volunteers. Uh, thank you very much to you guys. Uh, it's been it's been really nice uh, to see your your PR uh, your pull request. Very inspiring. If anyone else in the community also wants to help with the development of Drogo, adding new features, you want to link your external tool that you're using and you think that it should be on Drogo, please contact us and we'll, we'll work with you uh, so that uh, you know everybody has a better experience. Can you put uh, the name of the channel that you're using for developers yes. communication? Of That'd course, I'm sorry. All right, uh, thank you so, so much, Leo. Yeah, just contact me at Leo Blondel or on the dev channel, I'll post that in the in the chat in the chat in a second. All right, thanks. Um, the next step is to have some updates about the status of the community, uh, its dynamics, and so uh, we try also to show you what's going on in the background. We, we're usually very occupied in interacting with uh, our own collaborators, but it's interesting to see uh, how this global community, which is quite uh, a unique. Um, you know, thing right now. Like, uh, it's a very global community. How is it interacting? Where is it? Or where are people coming from? You know, what are their motivations? And so, I'm going to ask Mark uh, to give us some uh, some understanding uh, about uh, what's the dynamic of uh, our community. Mark. Hello. Do you hear me? Do you see my slide? Yes. Excellent. I put some updates in the Google Doc, so go there to check a bit names of people involved in that and there are links, there are links to these slides. Uh, so I, we have channels on the Slack program meta study team and then different channels related to that. Uh, I wanted to show you a bit something new compared to the last few weeks. Uh, nope, let me put that here. First, uh, I wanted to show you, you know, we're all over the world. It's beautiful. When you look at that, I, it's heartwarming. Uh, there's been recently, so we're kind of stable with thousands of people coming on Juggle per day to, to be active on the platform. Uh, there's been a, a shift uh, this, this past week with a lot of users from France. Uh, and <clears throat> that's something that is also linked to the fact uh, that there's been some communication going on last week. Uh, to the French press, uh, so to Combini on the social media or the conversation uh, on, on, on the news articles, uh, which allows to, to bring some people uh, in a non-organic manner. So we've had some people coming through the news article and through the communication on the social media, uh, so, so which, is, which is good. Uh, and so that's on the juggle side. On the Slack side, we're also pretty sustained. So that's the good news is that there's there's thousand people now on the Slack, so it's kind of a uh, we 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 passed kind of a bar here, uh, and uh, a really core community of two hundred people posting, which is huge. It's it's really a, a beautiful community in such a short time, seventy four channels, uh, and, and an active uh, you know twelve hundred messages a day. I think there was a deadline effect of, of uh, the, uh, the project that needed to submit a few days ago. Uh, and so there's been people taking the weekend uh, just after this, this deadline effect. Or they, they've been, so here it's only the public channels. We don't, we can't um, get the data from the private channels. So that would make sense too, yeah. That's true. Um, so I did something as well, which was to showcase a bit the evolution of uh, the uh, the words of, of the projects. Which projects were uh, are people posting every week? Uh, it was a suggestion of Thomas actually, uh, and and I had uh, really the luck of working with Ratin on the Slack, who did the work for showing that today. But you see that how the first week it was really about the lab notebook of, of the biology, then organizing the governance. People come in, they introduce themselves, and some projects take off, like the AI project that use you know, the open source community. Communications team is thinking, how do we communicate that to the world? Uh, and now the Syringe uh, Pump project, which is a very, very recent project in the past few days, uh, <laughs> that's taking a lot of the, uh, of the attention. And you see, obviously, I just selected a few, but you have the slide on the Google Docs, so you can go and look a bit at all the, 
all the different projects that are going on and, and posting uh, uh, every week. Uh, another thing that I literally, it's not, this slide is not in the Google Doc because Prashant just sent me that two minutes ago, but he did a, a web page where you can visualize what type of keywords uh, are present in the different projects and you can see linked resources related to these topics uh, that are covered in the different projects uh, so that uh, it's something that you can explore a bit further uh, and that also provides a way to represent what the community is, is investigating which i think is, is a quite uh, beautiful work uh, and finally uh, i just wanted to finish with this is the, the slack community over the past week uh, and something I wanted to focus on here was to show that it's well connected, but there's one thing that we need to work more, which is the bottleneck at the entry. Uh, and you see that many people come on the introduction channel and it's not necessarily related to the rest of the community. There is a bottleneck here. Uh, and that's something that uh, Roby uh, wanted to talk to you to update you for one minute, uh, maybe on on where they are with designing an onboarding process uh, with with their with their sub team. So, Roby, you can you can take the speech for one minute. Thanks, Mark. Uh, yeah, two things. So, first, there's a, an actual survey that we're working on to try and understand what are the problems that are occurring within the community. So, what sort of transaction costs are people having that we can reduce? Um, and then there's there's also a new Slack that we've created to coordinate efforts from across the community to ask questions about what people are doing. So the goal is here to basically provide some access to expertise, um, bring everybody together who's surveying the community in one place and design surveys that are well integrated with the data and services that we need to provide, and also really easy to analyze. So stuff that we can get in and out the door fast. Um, so if you have, have any questions about that, uh, you know, throw them in the, the chat or uh, contact me personally. Don't hesitate to put your, your name again in the chat uh, so that people can can relate or maybe the, your name on the slack Th thank you thank you so much guys uh this this is great uh i hope that you uh, you also uh, appreciate uh, this work it feels like it's a bit special uh to be able to provide this kind of uh, um point of view uh like meta point of view uh, macro let's say maybe point of view um the the next the next part is going to be the updates from the, the the different work groups we have within the community so we are very uh Lucky to have uh, a large uh, group of in volunteering individuals uh, working very hard in developing all the different aspects needed to make this program work. And uh, so uh, we have, uh, you know, the biosafety and biosecurity board. We have the governance working group. Uh, we have people working on making sure the the communication between projects and groups are, are working well with the what we call ambassadors now, uh, the communication group, uh, the review, the project review group. Uh, and now we have a new group uh, that is going to uh, to be presented, which is going to be about the student engagement. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, biosafety and biosecurity boards. Uh, uh, who would like to provide an update? Um, I could probably provide an update, um, even though I'm not a formal member of the board. Um, I don't know if any of the members are here today, but they've been working pretty hard over the past few weeks developing. Ra Ra Rachel is here. Yeah. Oh, oh, Rachel, also. do you want to? Okay, Rachel's here. That's great. Um, yeah, do you want to talk about the guidelines that you guys have been working on? Well, I, I don't think that this week there was anything really new about it. The uh, um, main exciting biosafety thing that we've learned about was just for one of the projects um, uh, that Sarah has access for BSL2 also, mm -hmm. so it's going to help. Um, but everyone should make sure that they're following the proper biosafety guidelines. Yeah. Was there something else new? We've um, been working I don't, on I don't the, think so. uh, the funding most, application. Yes, most most of the the work has been uh, has been done previously by by this group, and they have put up a, a, like a beautiful guidelines set of guidelines. I really encourage you you to go and and read them. Maybe we can put the link in the chat too. Um, so and otherwise, there are some new people also in the board. That's right. That might that's be right. By the biosafety group. Uh, don't hesitate to, if you're interested in running a, a work group, to um, to ping uh, the channels and 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 you know invite yourself basically. Um, the next the next uh, working group is going to be the governance one. Uh, and so, who would like to speak for this uh, for this group? Uh, hi. 
I, I can try to speak. Uh, if you don't hear me well, uh, I'll you. give the mic to Leo. If that's okay. Um, so hi everybody. Um, so I am not, uh, I'm, I belong to the governance group and with the governance group, we try to design organization and process that allows the community to work more efficiently together. And, um, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so we want to provide a framework uh, that enables everyone to work together uh, and to reach a greater impact for projects. Um, so basically this week, Manu has worked, um, you can see that later, but uh, Manu has worked on mapping uh, the whole in initiative. It's, it's really beautiful and we'll update on you uh, on that later. Um, but I don't know who's controlling the slide, but I think the main point is this one. We're gonna have new roles on the Slack exactly to address uh, the key challenge uh, Mark mentioned earlier. Uh, onboarding and guiding uh, people through this whole initiative and um, also uh, addressing um, project needs. So this is a call, this is an announcement. This has not been implemented yet, but it's starting now. So anyone in this community who'd like to act as a moderator, a guide or a recruiter um, can reach out to me and join the Slack uh, the Slack channel program community management. So the roles are very basic. Anyone can have it. A moderator just like reporting conflicts and keep the channel conversation on topic. Uh, guides will act like a link between projects and people and Slack channel, make sure no one get lost. And recruiters will have a very like important role on going to each uh, project needs and identify and in the identifying within the community who can best answer this need. Mark um, and many other people are working on making this an automatized process, but in the meantime, we're going to try to activate this uh, kind of manually. Um, oh, do you want, I see, uh, can you give a, an example of a person for each? You mean like a, someone who would, you mean like an actual person who belonged to this community or the kind of question? Or... I, I guess I, I, it's me. I, I just meant like, you know, can, can you give us like a, like a sort of an example so that people can relate, right? Because like th those are abstract okay. things. Okay, but just... sure. Yeah. So, okay, let's see, let's take the moderator. So if, if in a channel, let's say Leo, you have a, a rest, a rassing behavior towards me, uh, I can directly write to a person uh, whose um, moderator tag is next to his name in that channel. And this person will help me solve this issue, either by reporting at the program level so that the people will take uh, actions um, to like against this behavior. That's one example. Uh, an example for the guide is like, let's say, um, Anyone, like let's say someone named... Really speaking, um, speaking about the onboarding process. No, yeah. As Mark was saying, there was a bottleneck. Yeah, let's say Alex uh, just joined. Uh, Alex is not part of the team, just joined, let's say she uh, a week ago. And she has no idea where to start. Uh, she has no idea how the initiative looks like. And she has no idea where she can put her skills best at, like, uh, best, best at use. So she can write to the, to the person in the in any channel or in the introduction channel uh, with the tag guide and say hey like can you help me navigate this because yeah i don't really see where to start and this person will be a focal point um, recruiters are going to work a little bit differently recruiters are going to be proactive reaching out to projects and reaching out to people so if you're contacted by a recruiter um, this person may ask you, hey, uh, I saw you have these skills like and this project need um, a data visual visualization. Would you be able to help? Um, this is how recruiter will work. Um, all of this community will be um, gathered in one channel. And uh, this is a very good transition for a, a second point that I would like to chat about tonight, which is like kind of leaders of each channel and we call them uh, ambassadors. 
Um, so this is a new, this is an update from uh, the governance and the global coordination of this uh, community. We are calling out for ambassadors who are people who are active members of groups, typically in the Slack, it's all the groups that start with a program or challenge and who can really be the primary point of contact of their teams and sit once a week at an ambassador meeting to take decisions and really improve the coordination. So typically, like, please, if, if you are interested in representing your team, your group, uh, reach out to me. And we have a tremendous need, as, as uh, everyone said uh, here, on ob onboarding. Like, if someone really wants to take the lead on onboarding people and managing uh, the moderators, um, the guides, and also the recruiters, uh, please, please, please come to us. Um, that would be really awesome. Uh, I've listed below also um, other, other sections that need ambassadors. So if you belong to one of these work, working groups and you'd like to take the lead on this and be the representant, uh, please reach out to me. Yeah, um, so you can, you can join if, if you're interested in uh, being more involved in all the governance uh, or the co global coordination. Um, it's with much pleasure uh, that we welcome you and you're very welcome any Monday and Tuesday in our governance meeting and uh, on ambassadors meeting on Monday. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Camille. Uh, um, yeah, so don't, don't hesitate to, uh, to invite yourself also to those channels and those meetings, uh, everybody's yeah. welcome. Um, the next uh, part is going to be about the, well, the ambassador in community coordination and I will be inviting uh, Alex to speak. Yeah. Hi everyone. Um, okay, I'm going to share my screen real quick. Um, I have some um, slides to share with you all. So it's a pleasure to be here. I'm part of the Joggle team. Um, I'm one of the coordinators of the um, effort. And let me just <laughs> get my screen to start sharing. Okay. Um, Okay, here we go. So um, I'm going to be talking briefly, feel free to ask questions in the chat about a project we are launching uh, this week um, that is aimed to optimize collaboration between the different work groups. So those are project teams and other working groups. Um, so the question that we asked ourselves is how might we work better together? Um, so the idea is to build and implement a very streamlined internal communications process um, which will in turn improve collaboration between working groups within the community. So this means that working groups within the community know who to reach out to and there's a process to reach out to those, um, to their, the people they're trying to reach. This in turn will optimize the success rates of projects that are being built. Um, and those projects are really the solution, they're, they're, where, they're where the rubber hits the road for, for Joggle. Um, throughout that process, we're designing a communications process in a way that is very collaborative uh, with the spirit of co-creation um, while putting in place some structure, but also being very transparent. And in turn, once the um, process is in place, there will be a feedback mechanism so that we can continue to iterate on the design of this process to make sure that it stays current, efficient, and useful. So how will this look like? Uh, the next three weeks are going to be big uh, for this project, okay? So we're going to start a research phase right away and then we will be rolling out this process um, fully by the end of the month. So the first step um, starting next week is a survey step. So we will be surveying existing projects. Um, so anyone here on this call who is involved in a project or who is otherwise part of a working group will be contacted or uh, at least your, your project or team will, will look to reach out to somebody within your project or team. So uh, those are gonna be program level representatives 
that are going to be reaching out to you. Um, I'll talk later about how, and we'll be wanting to have a 15 to 30 minute conversation with you, and we'll be asking a series of questions um, that is going to be a standard survey for everybody. Uh, why are we doing this is we want to stay very collaborative and very inclusive, and so we want your, uh, you know, we're looking to get some information from you so that we can design a communications process that is most likely to succeed. Once we have that information, we'll be designing this process. So we'll use the findings from the survey um, to build out the structure of this process um, and enable project teams and other working groups to share their pain points, express their needs, or request different kinds of support. And the idea behind this, process, this communication process is that it be very user-friendly, so easy um, you know, for you to, to use, uh, easily referenceable, so it won't get lost in some of the other processes that we have in place. Uh, we hope that it plugs into existing channels or processes easily, and that it relays useful information to the right people. Right, pretty standard stuff. And so once the process is designed, we'll be implementing it. So by the end of the month, it'll be up and running. Um, this is going to take a pretty community-wide campaign to roll this out uh, because most people uh, in the community is involved in one way or another on one type of working group. So we'll be working across all project teams and collaborating with representatives from the different program teams as well. And we want to ensure the sustainability of this process. So we'll be iterating as we go. So uh, there's three ways for you to be proactive today if uh, you wanna help us out with this project. So the first is to reserve your work group survey slot. So if you are part of a project team or uh, a different working group that's not necessarily part of a, a Joggle project, uh, you can, regardless, uh, click on the button or use the URL to reserve your slot. Uh, this whole presentation is linked in the agenda for this call. So those slots are 30 minute slots starting Monday. And you can also share your pain point already. So we do have a running list that is a simple spreadsheet for now until we put in place uh, this new process. But if there are urgent needs that need to be addressed today, you can share those uh, using that spreadsheet there. And then the third way for you to take part is to share your project updates on the weekly community calls. So uh, that's happening later on this call, but I also wanted to make a call out to that um, Google Slides document where each project has a slide and you can share your important updates on that. So that's it. Uh, we look forward to you know, working together on this project. Uh, my name is Alix. You can find me on Slack. I'm a Java coordinator. So if you have any questions or if you, um, you know, have a specific suggestion, please reach out. This is a continuation of different types of surveying and work that's happening from the program level to the project level in terms of reaching out to project owners. So, um, you know, we're trying to build a platform that's most useful for project teams and other working groups. That's it for me. I've done a lot of talking. I'm happy to answer some questions. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, if you have any questions, by the way, I think I forgot to mention it. You have a little button uh, and that, can, that enables you to raise your hand. Uh, if you click on uh, participants, you receive the little button. Don't hesitate to use it. I'll be able to see it and then I'll give you the microphone. The, the next working group is going to be the communication work group. Uh, and Hans is going to explain what they've been doing recently. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Hans from the communications team. Um, and I'm here to give you a bit of an update from our team. So over the past week, we've been building our social media pages. So we have a Facebook, a Twitter, an Instagram, and a LinkedIn. I will put all of those links in the chat now, and I'll add them to the agenda at the end as well. So please uh, follow those pages, because I'm sure you'll be glad to hear some of the updates that we'll put there and see the posts. Um, feel free to share them as well, and also you know, click all the buttons of comment, retweet, and whatever, because all of that will tell the platform that people are engaging with the content 
and that content will therefore be sent to even more people. And that's all good for us because that means more, more visibility. Um, then this is basically a way of getting the pages off the ground as well. Um, and that will be uh, useful in the future to have a more significant following. Now, the good news is that you can also add open COVID-19 to your work experience on LinkedIn. So on LinkedIn, you can then show you've done work for COVID-19 and therefore, for example, potential employers can see that you helped with, uh, with efforts to manage the pandemic, which is, uh, which is good. Um, the next item is that we're also working on um, how to run progress updates from different projects. So as Alex already mentioned, but I'll put it back again, we have slides with templates that you can fill in before the community call. So I'm pasting the link uh, in the chat as well. Um, so please add a slide with a summary of your project, uh, the Slack ID of the main contacts, and by next Wednesday, you can fill in the progress update section. Next item, uh, really another cool output we've had recently is a set of guidelines for interacting with the press. So it's been made mostly by Julie Legault and it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I will put the link in the chat one right now as well. Um, so whether someone from the press approaches you or the other way around, then that document gives you a list of great ideas to make sure that it all goes well and that it's as useful as possible. But it's, it's such a fascinating document that I recommend reading it anyway. It's very interesting. Uh, the, finally, uh, if you want any help relating to communications, then please come and ask us. Uh, we have a Slack channel for the communications team. I'll also put it in the chat. Um, so the, if you want some help, for example, to, to get an update out, uh, or if, uh, if you want some publicity on your project, you can ask us. And we can also share you know, your progress, your achievements with, uh, with the rest of the world. And last idea we had is, is there's a person here that you admire for their amazing work, then we can give them a spotlight on, on our social media pages as well. So in summary, please go follow our social media pages. Uh, please fill in a slide for your project. Check the press guidelines if you want and come say hi on the, the communications channel if you want our help. And that's it for me. Thanks a lot for listening. Thanks so much, Hans. This is awesome. Um, the next work group uh, is uh, the project and then grant review group. Um, uh, quick question about communication. Oh, sorry. Yes, please be. Sorry, yeah, I my okay. microphone is 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 uh, over saturating. Oh, sorry, uh, I'll just do that for now. Is that okay? A bit better. Can you increase? Yeah, lower. okay. Yeah, this is much better. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll figure that out when I'm offline. Um, on the communications team, is there a central directory where all of these, where all of the working documents of the initiative are collected? And if there isn't yet. Could we create one? I'm, I'm frankly getting a little bit lost with lots of different um, document links in various chat things. So just a suggestion. Okay, so yes, we do have a Google Drive with all the documents. And uh, once again, I'll put it in the chat and I'll put it in the agenda. So I'm sure that you can find it and everything's in there. There's even subfolders and all the documents I mentioned will be there as well, okay? Okay, perfect, thanks. Great. Uh, who would like to speak for the project review team? Do we have Chris here or Elliot maybe? They've, they've been the one mostly working on, on this process. Uh, so I think I remember them saying that actually they couldn't make it actually. Um, so um, just then as a reminder, um, the, the, the review process is open to anyone. Uh, so please go to the, to the agenda to find all the links. Uh, it's going to be extremely useful. We really want to include the, you, you know, uh, the committee members in this process. It's very important for us. Uh, also don't hesitate to provide feedbacks, not only on projects first though, uh, but also on the process itself. We are learning with you here. 
Um, so, so it's it's really important that uh, you know you you uh, you know if you think some things could be better or that something is actually done wrong, don't hesitate to say it. That's very important. In fact, you could also use the the pain point uh, the document that has been shared before. Uh, so that's that's going to be extremely useful for the global process. Um, then the next group is going to be about the student engagement work group and Pauline, Pauline Chan is going to talk about it. Pauline, are you here? Hello, yes, I'm here. <clears throat> Hi, so I'm just kind of curious if we do have any like um, recent graduates or students in the call currently. So maybe, I don't know, react or type in the chat. Um, but what, but more importantly, what, oh, hi. So, <laughs> so more importantly though, we, I met, we, we met with Camille and yesterday to kind of discuss what we can do to better engage um, students that are coming to the community and looking to involve. And right now what we have decided to implement is a student engagement channel and you can find it at program, uh, hashtag PRGM dot student, sorry, dash student dash engagement. And Right now it's very bare bones, it just has a very friendly welcome image and a few guidelines, but mostly if you have a project or a program that would like to get some student involvement, that would be the place to go. If you are a student that's looking to connect with other students, please feel free to join or we are hoping in the future that we can maybe push forward some um, communications design or some data science projects within that um, channel as that would come from that channel that as well to kind of kind of get more people involved um i think at this stage what would be really nice is to get the word out to any students you know that want to help with open COVID 19 but aren't sure where to start i would like to see this maybe being pushed on social media because i think this is usually how majority of students do find out about these initiatives um trying to think if there was anything else I had to add, but I can't remember it at the moment. But basically, please check it out. I would love to have more people join. Awesome. Um, do we have people or students that would like to react to this? I, I see a couple in the chat. And I know Kat is a student as well. Yeah. Um... I, I, I've been talking with a few um, other students that I know of um, in my area and whatnot, um, but there has been um, a pretty high interest from from students in the high school or undergraduate um, grade levels that are interested in um, helping out with the pandemic, but feel that they may not have the experience um, or tools or whatnot to help out. So um, yeah, I mean, Pauline summarized it really well. If you have a project or if you're willing to mentor some students in, in different um, fields or whatnot, I mean, it'd be great if you could join the channel um, and, and reach out. I think it's a great idea just for what it's worth. I mean, there are already students working um, with BioBlaze on the Jogal, so I think it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, the next uh, and then the final group we'll be hearing from is a software work group uh, by Bill. Bill, would you like to, uh, to speak? Hi, uh, yeah, and I'll be uh, really brief. With, um, is my audio level okay now? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, three different volume controls. One of them was too high. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, the, uh, so the software work group is um, something that there was a governance um, document uh, circulated a while ago that had that listed on it. And I guess that that is mostly associated with the Slack channel uh, that Leo was talking about, program dev team. Um, so this is just a call for participation uh, for people who are interested in there being a uh, place to collect um, sort of cross project concerns about software and related technology stuff. I'd encourage um, uh, amplifying what Leo said going over to a uh, program dev team and, uh, and then sharing some ideas about what needs there might be. All right, Th thanks so much, Bill. Um, 
now we're getting to the most interesting part uh, of the call is the update from the product themselves. So this time, what we've been doing is to prepare uh, in advance a set of slides that projects could feel uh, so that we can provide also some graphics about what they've been doing. Um, so uh, who, would, who would like to, uh, to run the slides? Maybe I, I could do it myself if necessary. Just, just a minute then. I would be sharing my screen. All right. Here we go. Can you see my screen? Yep, yeah. you're good. Excellent. Let's do it this way then. So, um, this is the, okay, let's go to the first project. Who would like to speak about um, the, the advancement? Or maybe you can, you can just read it. Sorry, communication team, I'm not aware what the process I have to follow here. <laughs> Sorry for that. Sorry, Thomas, it looks like your screen uh, stopped sharing the slides. Oh. Right. And then maybe a good uh, practice would just be to call on the person of contact on the slide. And yeah. maybe moving forward, the name there can be the person who is committed to being on the community, the global community call, so that we know who to call out on. All right. Um, so do we have Julie Lego here? But I think Julie actually is sick right now. Uh, so I'm not sure that we have someone uh, here to rebuild this project. Um, so I, I could I could actually uh, uh, read, or you can actually read so you, uh, yourself. But uh, this this project started about two weeks ago, and the goal is really to provide uh, an easy way for um, you know children, but also adults, to understand uh, the complexity, the behind complexity uh, of what is virus, what is a pandemic, etc. Um, so if you're interested in this kind of approach, don't hesitate actually to uh, to join the project. Uh, directly also on Slack and, and Jogo. Um, the next project is uh, the, the project Nucleic Acid Amplification and uh, the person of contact here is Rachel. So Rachel, would you like to, uh, to present the last, latest investments? Sure, I could say a few things. Um, yeah, so we're hoping to make an open source uh, detection method for the virus that causes COVID-19. Um, something that's analogous to the GMO detective, uh, which is a very simple uh, kit where you would have eight tubes that have all the components necessary for the kits. You just have to add buffer and the samples to a few of the tubes because there are control tubes there also. Um, we have a nice team together and in the project nucleic acid amplification, there's sort of another sister project that's the um, the one um, I guess Sarah will talk about, she's here, so that's great, because um, Ellen said she couldn't come, I think. But um, basically the skills that we really need at this point are um, sort of logistical skills. It's basically about molecular diagnostics, but we're saying more about detection to avoid the whole clinical aspect. Um, but what we'd really like is one time at one of these calls, there was somebody from NAB, right? And so if we could find the good person to talk to about getting reagents and being able to, um, we, we have partners in six countries and we want to be able to have everybody um, first validate the different sets of reagents that are, so they're the most specific and the least ambiguous. And then we're gonna make these little kits and then send them to everywhere and make sure that they're fully validated and they work well after being shipped, like to Cameroon or to Chile. Um, so we've put in the funding request um, and we're still checking into new primer sets and also new enzymes. There's a new paper that just um, Ali pointed us to today. And um, yeah, we're really looking forward, hoping that we can, can really get this to work. Quick question, Rachel, if I can just jump in. I just want to confirm that the 
Slack channel, Project Nucleic Asset Amplification is the channel for the Joggle platform project, Do It Together SARS Cove, Cove, Cove 2 Detective. Exactly. Okay, perfect. Um, Thank I you. should have put the, I should, well, it, it, we sort of, the, in a way, all of us will hopefully come together. So the way it's written, basically, if the um, colorimetric method with just this color change from pink to yellow, if that works really well and we can lyophilize that, then we don't need the fluorescence. There's this extra detection method that's sort of a, a quenched fluorescence. Um, and if we don't have to do that, it's less expensive and easier if the color just works. But we're a bit worried about the pH shifting, if it will survive freeze drying also. Gotcha. Um, in addition okay. to other things. So, so in the end, the, the sister project has already gotten some results and Sarah will tell you about it. But then the, um, the big aim is to make this simple kit that's something that anyone could use. Great, thank you. Um, I'm just in the process of matching the, the Joggle platform projects to the right uh, Slack channel. That's yeah, why I was so asking that. So thank the you. The Slack channel really is this nucleic acid um, amplification, but I guess the, we have this hashtag Corona Detective, which is the okay. project on the front end of Joggle. Good to know. The EIT thing. Yeah. Thank you. So the next project is called uh, Mass Spectrometry Based Detection Methods for SARS CoV 2. And it is a project led by Nivi. Uh, is Nivi here? So maybe not. Um, so uh, if you want to learn more about uh, Nivi's project, uh, you can go to Proj Mass Spec uh, channel uh, on the Slack. Um, the next project is Thomas? yes. Yeah. Uh... I think Nivedita can talk about uh, this project. Uh, she just wrote in the conversation. Okay, sorry, I cannot see the conversation as I, I have the no whole problem. screen. Yeah. Um, the next project is uh, the cell-free project, the design and sequence specific SARS-CoV-2 RNA sensor using cell-free technologies. Do we have uh, Fran here? Um, Fran's not here, but I can... Uh give a little recap. Yes. Yes, <laughs> um, yeah. I'm Vesta and I'm working with uh, the others in the Cell Free uh, project channel. We're trying to create a genetic circuit using um, ribozymes and toeholds to uh, sense sequences of the viral gene, uh, sorry, the viral RNA. Um, and basically we're planning on trying to do these experiments across three labs. Uh, one in uh, where I'm located in Canada, Montreal, will be a home lab. Um, also, if uh, I will be doing any of these tests, I will be doing it with Justin, uh, using Justin Atkins' lab. He has the Thought Emporium YouTube channel, so he'll probably be uh, videoing uh, these experiments. And then Annabelle is in Chile with Fernan uh, Ferdici, and um, uh, Francisco is in Spain. Uh, yeah, we're looking for uh, more people to hop on board with this project. Uh, if you're interested, uh, let us know. Awesome. Thank you so much, Vista. Vista, can I jump in real quick? Do you guys have a Joggle project going? Uh, yeah, we do. It's called um, uh, Cell Free Sensors, I believe, the short name. Um, Great, thank I think you. It's project 188. Thank Great. you. Thanks. Um, the next project is uh, the mental health project. So designing and iterating with mental health professionals, processes, websites, apps, and relevant resources for pre, mid, post COVID-19 experiences for patients and the general public. And it is a project led by George Eric. George, are you here? Yes. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah, your connection is not very good. Maybe you can actually it's avoid your, your stream. It's just frozen. <laughs> yeah, maybe remove your video stream. Okay, yes, yes. Yeah, is that working or is that? It's working, but just remove your video stream for guaranteeing that it's okay. Okay, when you say that, what do you mean? Sorry, when I just remove cut stream, video my stream. And, and, and oh, my video, okay, gotcha. Account. Yes, thank you. Okay, no, no, that's great. Yeah, no, thank you. And uh, we just appreciate all of the energy behind all of this. So 
Um, yeah, so basically, um, this is very, very much in its early stages. Uh, Camille was onboarding me, and so I'm still getting my feet on the ground with the processes as well as um, how this all works together, but I love the energy behind it. And so I'm a behavioral scientist, and so basically this whole concept is trying to create resources, whether they be tangible resources or online resources or virtual opportunities for people to actually deal with, as we already know, um, you know, uh, anxiety or loneliness, which is the kind of silent pandemic. So even though a lot of what has been shared thus far has been very, very much around development or, you know, um, this one's more focused on the kind of individual or even offering corporate services for um, mental health. But um, as I've said there, you know, relevant resources for pre, mid, post COVID-19 experiences. And the reason why I even include pre is because we do have people who are, you know, even trying or thinking that they might be materializing the symptoms and they don't and you know how they deal with the mental health side of it and so i'm really really still excited about this but i'm also very much in the early stages so open to ideas open to networks open to collaboration and thank you by the way <laughs> well thank you to you um then uh because we have a number of projects i will be uh we'll be taking questions you know at the end we'll, we'll have some time for people to speak freely um okay so the next project is the syringe pump project. Um, it's uh, I think developing, validating, and deploying a robust uh, fault tolerant uh, syringe pump for glucose uh, delivery in hospital settings. Uh, and so it's very new project, as Mark has been showing also in the, in its analysis of the community dynamics. And uh, and so I will be calling uh, for Sina. Uh, I don't know if Sina is here. Yeah, I'm here. I see. So, so but, okay, uh, yeah, as, I can just... as a way, as a way to, to introduce you, uh, Sina. So, um, when we started this project, um, the idea was it was a demand from APHP, the Paris Association, uh, Paris Hospitals Association, uh, that uh, syringe pumps were starting to lack. Uh, and so, we, uh, we started this group, and uh, Sina, we were starting working on Sina's uh, model. So, Sina is the creator of. Uh, the Poseidon uh, open source syringe pump. And uh, so we are very lucky to have him in the group as long as, long, um, as well as uh, other people also very, very competent here. So Sina is going to explain what is going on right now in this project. Yeah, thanks uh, Tomas for the introduction. So hello everyone, my name is Sina. Uh, I'm a third year PhD student at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, California. Um, so we're working on a syringe pump, which is fully autoclavable, uses uh, sort of open source tools like the smoothie board. We have one of the lead developers of the smoothie board on the team. And the idea is to free up syringes that deliver very standard glucose uh, to patients. So that way those syringes can be used. I should say syringe pumps can be used to deliver more critical drugs to patients in need. Um, there seems to be a, a huge need for this. Um, so we are working right now with manufacturers. Uh, we're sourcing items from manufacturers in China, and we are on a really short turnaround turnaround time. And we're we're planning on getting the syringe pump out, like ideally within the next two weeks. Um, it's really rapid uh, rapid pace. If anyone's interested in joining, we have a we have a Slack channel. I'd recommend that you um, you shoot us a message. And uh, if you have any of these skills, where we, we could totally use you. A computer design, if you know any smoothie board programming, uh, interface development, or if you know how to source components, uh, hardware components um, from manufacturers in China. I should say that the final, the final goal is a is a like Thomas said is like a it's a robust and fault tolerant syringe pump. So a lot of DIY projects are just known for not being really uh, fault tolerant, or, or or they're not used for safety critical missions. I use missions in quotes. Uh, but our goal is to really make sure that we, we are upholding the standard of, uh, of manufacturing such that when hospitals use our pump, they're not going to get any, there's going to be no problems with it. It's going to be, it's going to work. It's going to work well. It's going to work the first time. So our timeline is uh, sort of, like I said, within two weeks to a month, we're going to try and get a syringe pump to the hospital so that they can run their own external sets of validations uh, on the pump and then give us feedback and then we'll iterate from there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Awesome. Uh, as an indication, we're right now also meeting uh, every day at uh, 9 p.m. Paris time. Uh, so don't hesitate to, uh, to join in. It's going to be on the same link as for the Zoom. Um, the next project is going 
is it maybe the, the last one? I guess I cannot actually uh, change it. So it was the last one. Um, and then I'm going to go to uh, the people who, has, who have added their name. Um, All right, so the next project is going to be the cough check project and Hernan is going to speak about it. Are you here, Hernan? Yes, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, everybody. Just, I, I was cooking, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, this project is, um, it's, uh, it's about building an open source uh, mobile application, which uh, the intention is to help in early detection of COVID-19. Um, so uh, people can use the app uh, when they want to call, or and in the first phase, we are going to collect these calls around the world so we can train a machine learning model to discriminate, uh, to be able to discriminate between COVID-19 cows and non-COVID-19 uh, cows. So this is barely early, in early stage of development. So we are just building community and building the code base. We have uh, an incredible team of collaborators. Um, so we are going, we, we are planning to launch this application in the next month, maybe. So we are just setting up everything. Awesome. Thank you, Anand. Um, the next project is going to be the open source face mask uh, challenge that uh, we, we launched now uh, a few weeks ago. The, the updates are that uh, right now with our partner at PHP, we're in the process of uh, testing some of the best designs of both, uh, both uh, FFP2 mask and uh, face shields. Um, and so uh, we are very uh, you know, fortunate uh, to be able to, uh, to, uh, well, to work with them because you know, once we have a validated design by the PHP, it means that it could be used by any other hospitals in the world. Um, the, the main uh, bottleneck we have right now with the, the face mask is uh, especially the filtering material. So one thing is to print uh, masks, uh, the other thing is to have the right material uh, and to bring the right material inside. So we've been uh, working a lot on that part. Uh, we have identified several kind of uh, materials. The idea is that uh, because we are talking about masks that are supposed to protect yourself, not to protect others, that's like, um, such as surgeon's mask. Uh, so it means it's especially made for people in contact with patients. So we don't want to fail on that. Uh, and so the, the, because uh, the most critical part of this mask is filter, we're thinking of uh, going for design that is able to uh, take existing approved uh, filtering materials. Uh, for FFP2 mask. So we've been working and discussing with some of the industrial actors in France and, um, and uh, to see how we could actually make this happen. Because then, you know, if we have um, like a general design for face mask, if it works with a material in France, it could be just, you know, be used uh, also with uh, uh, other kind of materials in like authorized materials elsewhere. Um, so that's basically where we are right now, uh, in, in the process of testing. The next project is uh, the Free Jeans project by CUNY. Uh, CUNY, are you here? I'm here. Um, hello, can you hear hello. me? Hi, we can hear you. Awesome. Um, great. So, background for anyone who doesn't know what the Free Jeans project is the Free Jeans project is a project by the BioBrex Foundation operating out of Drew Endy's lab at Stanford University in order to um, distribute free and open source DNA for the world um, with the fundamental belief that uh, DNA and DNA information belongs to everyone in the world and that everybody should have access. Specifically in the outbreak of COVID-19, we've been looking at two different sections of uh, communities that could benefit from open access to DNA. The first is um, diagnostic and detection testing, which is um, what we can provide for them is positive and negative controls 
as well as detection and diagnosis enzymes, such as reverse transcriptase um, and uh, DNA polymerase like TAC for RT-PCRs or the BST polymerase for people doing RT-LAMP, um, as well as expression vectors in mammalian cells or in gateway, uh, gateway compatible vectors in order to do expression of COVID-19 ORFs to test out potential cures um, vaccines or the like. Um, on those two sections, uh, Free Genes has successfully gotten um, a reverse transcriptase that we will be shipping out this Friday to about 20 different people. I will post the uh, chat link if you would like to get this reverse transcriptase. We will also be sending out the BST polymerase and um, some DNA polymerases next week, early next week, hopefully, uh, so that you can produce all the enzymes necessary to do detection or diagnostic tests in your local environment. Um, the most important thing to note about all of these materials, we've vetted them to be off patent, so you don't have to, be, you don't have to worry about infringing any potential intellectual property rights. And we have also negotiated with institutions um, to release these materials under the Open MTA. I mean, extremely unrestricted material transfer agreement that allows you to um, freely redistribute the materials you get. Um, unlike Agene, where you are not legally able to redistribute any of the materials you get to anyone else. Um, so we've gotten that legal tool through several different institutions. And for every one that we ship to, we will be shipping about five copies of uh, the diagnostic enzymes, the positive controls, or the um, mammalian ORFs so that you can redistribute downstream, even if you can't use the enzyme. If you know that your country may be hit or your country is getting hit by COVID-19 and there may be researchers interested in these materials in your local environment, um, I would encourage you just to sign up to get materials from us. Um, our goal is to get, get these materials um, to all the different edge users that may be able to use them. Um, and, and to note again, um, you don't just have to be an individual doing this. You can be an institution or you can even be a company. All of our materials that we send out are completely free from any intellectual property rights. Um, and finally, uh, it would be great to collaborate with some of, uh, some of the like nucleic acid detection projects um, because we, uh, we produce materials that you guys can use and produce enzymes that you guys can use. Um, and then finally, on Friday, we'll be doing a uh, kind of a push of this form out to the world through the BioBricks Twitter. And so maybe we can, um, if you could like or retweet, I can, uh, I can send that around. Thanks. Thank you, Kenny. This is awesome. Um, the next project we want to hear about is the project by uh, Sarah Ware trying to reproduce NEB lamp results. Sarah? Okay, so we overlap a lot with Rachel, what she was saying, um, and their group, but we are trying to work directly with the NEB lamp color and metric kit from, you know, from NEB. Um, there's a report that it works really well using COVID-19 or the SARS-CoV-2 um, primers. And so we've got those primers and we've been doing some tests for, to see if we can reproduce it. Um, we're working on some sensitivity issues um, and optimization. So right now, Ellen has done an experiment or two with it and um, at BioBlaze we've done quite a lot of experimentation so far with it. Um, but some things we need to optimize are primer concentrations, magnesium chloride concentrations, those optimized together, um, RNA storage buffers because the viral transport medium that's uh, standard for um, in hospital settings to put the swab into is a bit inhibitory to the lamp reaction or would be inhibitory to any PCR or an amplification method. So looking at storage buffers um, or ways to get around that with the storage buffers that are used and then also looking at RNA inactivation methods. 
So um, like Ellen, or sorry, like, um, so Ellen couldn't be on here today, but so like Rachel was saying, um, this is using a pH indicator. So it's just a color change from pink to yellow if positive, but because it's using pH, um, we need to really find out if that's gonna be reliable um, enough for what we wanna do. Um, yeah, so I guess that's most of our report. So we're already doing work, but um, looking for more collaborators. Awesome, thank you, Sarah. Um, all of this uh, is so promising. Um, the next project we want to hear about is the AP Modeling Toolkit by John Urbanik. John? I guess, um, relatively quick update this week. Uh, so I put a new spec out for uh, a open data exchange for epidemiology modeling data. Um, pretty high level spec uh, where uh, it's got the full vision for what a full product would look like as well as a secondary document around what our MVP looks like right now. Um, but uh, speaking to the vision a little bit, uh, the idea would be to have a uh, fully open science, uh, open data exchange, wherein uh, people can submit publications, uh, extract uh, parameters of different distributions for a ontology of uh, different types of inputs that we need for epidemiological modeling. Um, and uh, have uh, data pipelines running that would uh, actually validate uh, this data and compare it to other parameterizations of the same uh, parameter from other studies and all sorts of other nifty things. Um, very ambitious, uh, but something that I think should exist um, and something that I've got quite of experience building similar products uh, in other spaces. Um, so if you're interested in contributing there uh, as a data engineer um, or a public health person, uh, you know, so that we can build out that ontology of like, these are the types of things that we need to capture, um, certainly jump into the, the Slack channel. Um, and uh, Mark just said to add the project to, uh, the data project, which I have done. I don't know what's going on with caching on that side, because if you look at the actual uh, project on Jogle, it says it's part of the data project, but not. Oh, that's right. Because Mark actually needs to uh, validate uh, yeah. your arrival in the challenge. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, beyond that, uh, working on some initial specs for uh, the other parts of the Epi modeling toolkit, uh, including the simulation portion, um, as well as uh, initial work on some uh, communication guidelines um, where talking to the epidemiological modeling uh, community, um, one of the major concerns has been that, you know, people are not comfortable publishing their work uh, because of uh, fear that it'll be misconstrued in media. Um, and so I think that there's a lot of important work to do around trying to figure out how we can uh, continue to facilitate collaboration between uh, epidemiological modelers uh, without the dangers of, you know, uh, media distorting their results. Um, so if you are someone who's interested in communications and scientific publishing, um, also interested in talking to you there. Um, but uh, a lot of work to be done. Um, there's also some initial work that uh, been doing in the parameters uh, uh, folder of that repo that I posted uh, around some other ways of estimating some of the parameters um, more empirically from data. Um, and uh, additionally, I think next up is uh, quantified flu, but uh, Lou Buff, um mentioned that he thinks that there's some uh, opportunities for collaboration here where, uh, you know, using some of the techniques that we're developing um, in the epi modeling toolkit may be useful for imputing missing data um, on the contact tracing side. Um, so interested to hear more about that. Um, planning on catching up with Lou above uh, sometime this week. So. Awesome. Thank you, John. Um, the next project is going to be Quantified Through by Bastian. 
Yep, I'm here. Hey, everyone. So, yeah, we've, we're still working on the website and trying to get more wearables supported to allow people to upload their hardware Could you introduce data. your project again? Maybe very fast. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. So we are having this project where we crowdsource the collection of wearable device data, especially for resting heart rate and body temperature if supported, to see if we can correlate those to the outbreak of viral infections in general, but also to COVID-19 in particular. And we launched this thing, I think, two weeks ago. Since then, around 100 people have donated their complete wearable device history and started annotating when they've fallen sick in the past. And they also fill out reports of when they are falling sick now. So every day, people get a, a little email reminder and say, are you sick today? If yes, press this button. If no, press that button. And so right now, we support two different devices, all Fitbits and the Ura Ring. And we had one contributor actually through Joggle who wrote the whole application for getting Apple Watch data Im imported as well. And it's currently blocking on us trying to make the Apple Store, App Store review gods happy. So the first thing for everyone here who's trying to do mobile apps for the App Store from Apple, be aware that all COVID-19 apps will be rejected at this moment. Unless you are an official health organization, you need to remove all references to COVID-19 or otherwise you're out of luck. And yeah, there's a couple of other things. So we are rebranding everything and make it more generic so that they will not notice what it's actually about during the review stage. And then hopefully in like next week, we can resubmit again. That's the state. And otherwise, we are looking for people who are developers to develop either more data visualizations or more data importers for other devices like Garmin, Polar, what else people are using. So if you are interested in this, be in touch. We are on the Slack as well. And see you there. Awesome. Thank you, Bastian. Um, I don't see any more names in the list. So uh, if you have a project you'd like to bring on a date for, um, please do it now. Okay, I think that would be all for tonight in terms of updates from the projects. Um, ne for next time, don't don't forget actually to um, to follow the 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 framework uh, using the, um, the the slides that was provided to all projects. Uh, uh, that would make things much more e easy uh, and maybe like try to uh, to make it more short in terms of also of length of presentation. Try also to maybe to uh, to to bring more graphical uh, descriptions about what's going on in your project. I think that would be uh, very enjoyable for the viewers. Um, the the next part is um, the calls for the community. Uh, so uh, every time we want to uh, you know make sure that you're aware of uh, the kind of needs that uh, this program could have and how you could help. Um, so um, the first thing is actually, um, Kat, um, would you like to take the lead on that part? Hey, so on, on what part? Sorry, I didn't hear you right there. No worries. Uh, the course for the community and then the course for the leadership and community management. Yeah, so a lot of these calls for community are, um, they're pretty much just the ongoing calls that we have there. Um, pretty similar to what we had last week and the previous weeks. Um, so the first one is just resources. Um, so a lot of new people have been joining every single week and we want to know um, what sort of resources everyone has access to and to help connect people to different, um, different things. So if you haven't filled out the initial team survey yet, it's part of the onboarding steps document, which um, the Slack bot should have um, shown to you. But if you don't have access to that, it's at the very top of the agenda doc. Um, um, there's also a list of resources on the program page. Um, if you need access to computing resources or other things, um, there's, there's a list of things um, that anyone in this initiative or community can, can access. Um, so the second point is just, we're continuing to collect information on um, the projects that are running in our community. Um, Alex and Camille and a few other members today talked about um, collecting information about them. Um, so um, if, you, if you have a project going on, it'd be great if you could put it on Joggle um, and also create a channel on Slack if you don't already have that. Um, if you could also contact Alex to book an interview and share your pain points. 
um, that would be great so we can know how to help you and what sort of resources we can get you. Um, and additionally, Pauline talked about this a little bit earlier in the call, but if you're willing to welcome students or mentor students, um, that would be great and we'd like to help get them involved. Um, additionally, just um, if you're interested in applying for a micro grant, it's important that your project is on the Joggle um, program page. Um, there are instructions on how to apply for the grant um, when they open up again. Um, but, but if you do not have a Joggle project page, um, we will not be able to give you funding as it has to go through the Joggle organization. Um, so if you're looking to do that, it would be great if you could put it on, on Joggle. And if you need any help with that, um, feel free to reach out. Um, and then finally, just um, the ongoing call for biosafety board members. So if, you're, um, if you have expertise or experience in biosafety or biosecurity, there's a link to request to become a member. Um, and all of the requests are reviewed by the current ongoing um, board members. Um, additionally, um, uh, higher up in the agenda, there's a link to the biosafety guidelines. And if you haven't looked at them yet for your project, that would be great if you could stick to them. And if you also have any sort of suggestions or things that perhaps the guidelines missed, there's a process of suggesting um, suggestions or recommendations to the guidelines. Um, I'll just go on. So um, Camille talked about this earlier in the call, but if you're interested in taking more of a leadership role um, within the initiative or within the projects or, or challenges you're working on, um, we would highly encourage that. We need as many people willing to step up and help organize different things. Um, and so Camille would be a great person to talk to, or you can um, join the governance channel or the community management channel and, and learn from there. Um, one of the newest things that we talked about is figuring out a way to help connect new people of the initiative to, to the ongoing efforts. And if you're interested in helping with that, um, that would be great. Um, number five is, is an announcement that we've, we've kept um, and, it, and it remains open. If, if I stand corrected, Leo, feel free to chime in. But if you have um, suggestions for how to better develop or, or change the Joggle platform to, to suit your needs, um, there's a link to a form there um, so they can add features or, or make changes to what's existing um, to adapt to your needs. Um, and I guess finally, there's a link to our calendar. So we recently created a calendar where we can display where everyone's meetings are. Um, and if you're interested in hopping into a meeting, most of them use this exact Zoom room. Um, but there are a few other ones in the channels, depending on if they're double booked, but if you're interested in adding an event to the calendar or if um, you just want to add the calendar to your list of calendars, there's the link. Um, and then finally, Hans talked about it earlier, but those are social media channels. Um, please give them a follow, share them with people you know um, to stay updated. And we'll be having a call again at this time next Wednesday, um, and the recording for this call will be on our playlist, which is linked down below. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. Um, before we announce the, the end of this call, uh, who would like to speak up and share anything with the community? The moment is now. Also, don't hesitate to raise your hand. Well, uh, if everything is okay for you, then the last part has, um, well, to finish is to, you know, like every time we ask everyone to put your video stream on uh, so that we can say a little hello to the online community when we'll be sharing this video. Um, could you do that? Uh, yes. Almost everyone, more, maybe Sina, Hanan, do you, can you uh, put your video stream on? I and try, I, my connection is, is pretty bad. <laughs> All right, so um, I will take a, a screen capture, Don't ha and then we can say hi. Say hi to the online community. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, it's been a fantastic meeting, uh, so much advancements. Uh, it's really mind boggling. Uh, and I'm sure we'll have even more news to share next week, um, especially when we'll be finished with the review process for the projects. 
Um, thank you again and see you in the channels and on Google. Bye bye.